Hoyt's Bow Hunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Coat of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail, Fuse Accessories, Elevate Tree Stands, B3 Releases and Broadheads, and Hoyt. I just thought of a question. So, there's obviously a ton of food on this farm. Um, you've got corn, you've got clover, apples. What's like the tiered, like, ranking of deer favorites? What's their preference? Yeah, I think that's worth talking about. Let's talk about it. I'm filming. Okay. Well, the tiered favorites. I think the apples would be down the line a little ways. I think the number one is acorns. Mm -hmm. We've seen that, you know, in the places that they were dropping. I mean, they were just like a you know, cow feedlot the way the deer have been in them. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, if it's warm, I would say maybe there's a three or four different uh, foods that, that would fit into that. Maybe, maybe the apples would come in, um, green, uh, soybean leaves are a high priority for deer this time of year. Alfalfa is still strong, clover. Uh, as it starts to get a little bit colder, then the corn is going to be the number one draw. I think that you know, the acorns will be gone by the time the corn um, really becomes the main draw. So I would say probably in November sometime that you'll see kind of a really strong move into the corn. and. Uh, usually the last half of November. Um, when it's warm, the deer don't really need all the carbohydrates. They get by pretty well with, you know, whatever. But uh, once they get, you know, into the colder times, then the corn really, really comes in. And What about sorghum? Is that, you said they like it when it's kind of doughy and mm -hmm. that's later fall, mid fall? Uh, I would say, um, Oh, I was getting tired. Yeah, I was moving around a <laughs> bunch. I would say the sorghum is, is uh, the dough stage is in September, mm. usually. And then they really like it again, or they don't really like it. They eat it uh, late season, mm. like December, January, around here. Other parts of the country, they might get into it sooner because they, they don't have as many options. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to eat it instead of corn. Right. Uh, so if there's corn, they're going to go to the corn first. So our little sorghum patches are going to be useful only because there'll be something really late or they're because they tolerate the deer during the summer you know the deer don't eat them during the summer mm -hmm. but they might be there in spots where otherwise there's not much food right so it's not necessarily like a favorite it's more of like a necessity yeah it's there yeah you know it's more like a function of it being there right than the deer going and looking for right. it right uh, at least on this farm like i said other parts of the country where sorghum is really more the staple then they would be going to it more consistently uh those would be the main ones. If you look at, what else do we have? Turnips. Uh, turnips, yeah. Those, they're eating them now because they, they're certain uh, of the varieties within those blends that they like early. Mm -hmm. And then others of them, they like better after it freezes and, and uh, they're mostly eating the greens, the tops. They're starting to eat the bulbs just a tiny little bit. You know, and that's, when we say that, we're really talking about brassicas, which is turnips, uh, radishes, kale, Dwarf Essex Rape. Um, in my experience, they like the Dwarf Essex Rape early and then the stuff that produces bulbs later. Um, so, I mean, really, I think it's nice to have a blend of everything. Yeah. You know, to have a lot of diversity. If I had to pick one thing, only one thing, mm -hmm. I think I'd have a rotation. I'd have uh, beans and brassicas. You know, you plant beans in the spring and then you drill your brassicas into those, and then you've got a really nice plate full of food it's if you don't have too many deer mm -hmm. for the whole year. Um, because they'll eat the beans again after they dry down. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll eat the whole pod uh, starting in, well, whenever the, they dry down. About the same time the farmers are starting to combine the beans, mm. that's when the deer start going back to them again. They'll eat them when, they, when the leaf is green. When it turns yellow, they, they avoid it, and they come back to it again when the pod dries down. I see. That's interesting. Yeah. What about, uh, well, we've seen, like, 
it's hard to keep a garden going in like the summer and stuff like that because they'll eat whatever you've got growing out of your garden. Yeah. So that's kind of more of a because it's there type yeah, of thing. I think so. Yeah. I mean, and there's probably some stuff in there that they really like. Right. It's just that it's not, you know, viable commercially, you know, right. or not commercially, but on a big scale. Right. So we tried turn or uh, pumpkins, mm -hmm. and we'll see how they play out. Mm -hmm. You know, some people just swear by them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll we'll see what the deer do to the ones that we planted. Did you discuss clover? Yeah, clover is kind of a, along with alfalfa, it's, it would be a spring, summer, early fall. Because they like it when it's green, yeah. right? Yeah. Once it freezes hard and withers down, they're not as... They don't go to it as hard. I mean, they'll eat alfa alfalfa during the winter too. Yeah. It's just not as palatable as it is when it's still green. And then other kind of random things that we saw, they like the Queen Anne's lace. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously a summer thing because I can't imagine they eat it when it no. is all dead and dribbled. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of browse. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's probably a list of, that's, that's uh, a short, the shorter list is probably what they don't eat right. than what they do eat. Okay, I guess my better question is like, if if there is a ton of browse, they're still gonna gravitate towards their those specific foods that they like the best, right? Like yeah. the corn yeah. and um, yeah. Sometimes the browse trumps the corn though. Okay. Yeah, there's they know there's something in it in their systems. Yeah. They know what's most palatable. You know what what fits their physiological needs at that time. So they're not eating it um, because there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. You know, especially here. I mean, they're eating Queen Anne's lace because for some reason it was really nutrient mm -hmm. dense. You know, and and. Uh, right, they're not like people. It's like, mm, I'm picky. I'm gonna eat this. It's like. Yeah. This is what we need. Yeah. Yeah, they know like at any given time, what you've got that's most uh, useful to their system. Hmm. You know, to to uh, give them the highest amount, highest density of nutrients for the least amount of effort. Interesting. They're very efficient. Yeah. Um, the, only, the only exception is corn. They'll eat corn during the summer, and it's mostly like eating cotton candy. Yeah. Because it's got a lot of, like, again, it's got a lot of carbs. Yeah. But they're more in the form of, like, sugars. Right. Starches and stuff, yeah. Yeah. So it's, they don't really gain much from it, but they like it because yeah. it tastes good, I guess. Um, Dessert. Dessert sweet corn. That's right. Okay. Here you go. That's all I got. <laughs>